Look to your arms and equipment, for there is no one in this world you may trust more. Not men, not women, and not beasts. This you can trust. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to The Gamer's Den, with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, bringing you uh, the next step in the Pathfinder War Priest Guide, today taking a look at the equipment selection you want to go with for this particular build. But before we get into all of that, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there and hit that subscribe button and become a regular member here at The Gamer's Den. Join the historic alumni, or if you're already known on such a legendary roster, then hit the like button, share the video far and wide, and help us grow ever further. But now, we can finally get into it. To begin with, for the War Priest equipment, we're going to take the Lucerne Hammer, also called a pole hammer or sometimes a pole axe if it's got a blade on the back of it. But this will be your main weapon. It does 1d12 points of damage plus strength and a half because it's a two handed weapon. Crits on a roll of 20 for double damage, and it can brace and has reach. It will also give you a plus two bonus on sundering medium or heavy armor. Adamantine works especially well with sundering and the likes, so this is a very good weapon to get made out of adamantium. Also, remember that your divine weapon ability can give you several enchantment effects. But with all that said, one enchantment, actually a couple of enchantments to keep your eyes on would be something like Invigorating, which counts as a plus two enchantment bonus. It reduces exhaustion and fatigue, or if you're not exhausted or fatigued, it will give you a plus two morale bonus on attack and plus 10 feet to all forms of movement. So if you have a fly speed, 10 feet, your ground speed, another 10 feet, so on and so forth. Another enchantment would be Mighty Cleaving. This one counts as a plus one enchantment bonus. It, it gives you an extra cleave attack against an adjacent target in reach. The target has to be adjacent to the first one that you hit. Can't be the same target, but as long as they're together, you, uh, close to each other, uh, adjacent, then you can use this ability to great effect given that we're going into building with a, a cleave uh, kind of build using vital strike and the like this will be immensely handy for pumping up your damage output but of course we have more for you we need to take a look at the divine weapon enchantments that you can provide to your weapons this gives you a plus one enhancement bonus at level four and every four levels thereafter topping out at a plus five at level 20. This can also give you different enchantment effects, uh, if you select them, that is. So if, you, if it costs one or two enhancement bonus, then that's what it'll take away from the enhancement bonus you can provide. So if you can give a plus four, but you take keen, which is a plus one bonus, you can only give a plus three and keen. But this will give you the options of applying Brilliant Energy, Defending, Disruption, Flaming, Frost, Keen, and Shock. And then, if you are chaotically aligned, you can also apply Anarchic and Vicious. If you're evil, you can go to Mighty Cleaving and Unholy, which Mighty Cleaving is just worth it to have on there in general as a regular in, uh, enchantment, but anyways, moving on. If you're good, you can go with Ghost Touch and Holy. If you're lawful, you can go with Axiomatic or Merciful. Or if you're true neutral, you can take Spell Storing and Thundering. So all the way around, this gives you a lot of flexibility and applicability depending on what the situation is at hand. And you, this frees up a lot of your budget too, so you can get yourself a plus five weapon and not have to get it fully enchanted. And then you have all these other options that you can apply. So very, very, very handy to have all the way around. And then the next thing we pick for our offhand is a buckler. You can use this with a two-handed weapon. This will give you plus one to your armor class, minus one armor check penalty, so all the way around, not bad at all. So getting just that little bit more of a boost can make the difference between taking another hit and not. 
An enchantment I would recommend getting is Martyring. It costs a pretty penny at 18,000 gold pieces, but once a day, you, as an immediate action when you're hit with a critical hit, you can trigger a Mass Cure Light Wounds, which will heal 1d8 plus 9 hit points for 9 allies within 30 feet. Normally, I'm not a fan of using spell slots to heal in the middle of a fight, unless things are particularly dire. This frees you up from having to do so, because chances are, unless luck has just totally gone against you, by the time you take a critical hit, everybody else is probably going to be uh, going to have at least been hit a little bit. So getting just a little bit of a healing boost there without needing to spend a standard action and spell slots is fantastic. The next thing I would select is fortification, either medium or heavy, depending on what you can afford. I've seen a lot of people online say heavy's not worth it, it counts as a total of a plus 5 in uh, enhancement bonus, so it gets very expensive very fast, and applying it to a magic weapon already means the cost is even higher than you might expect, but if you have the money, I'd say it's worthwhile, because, well, if you look at it mechanically and take out the roleplay aspect of it, money doesn't really do you anything. It just lets you buy things, and you want to buy things like these kind of enchantments. Medium and heavy. What these do is any time you are hit with a critical hit or sneak attack, you have either a 50% chance or a 75% chance to make it a normal attack. So every single critical hit, every single sneak attack coming your way, and remember, if you're at the point that you're able to afford a heavy fortification enchantment on a magic shield, you are probably going to be dealing with a rogue that's got two weapon fighting, is flanking you, and has a sizable sneak attack damage pool, and they're going to be hitting you every time, and every time they hit that sneak attack. So, yeah, you definitely want a heavy fortification in place, or at least a medium, just to make it 50-50 on what you're reducing definitely great and life-saving to have. But then, for your general armaments, or well, armor, you want to go with a suit of full plate. It gives you a plus 9 armor bonus, a max dexterity bonus of plus 1, which suits this build just fine. We're not going for a very high dex at all. Uh, you do take an armor class penalty of 6, though, and your speed will be reduced to 20 feet. So, if you can get this made out of Mithril, this will be very, very handy for you in reducing that penalty and boosting your max dex bonus in case you do decide to go with just a little bit more dexterity. Now, Divine Armor, your Divine Armor ability, will allow you to imply other enchantments to your armor. But there are still some that you want to take, just like with our weapon. Determination is one that I would really recommend. It's 30,000 gold pieces, but it doesn't count against your overall enhancement allotment. One time a day, when you hit zero hit points, this will auto-cast Breath of the Breath of Life spell on you. Now, we are going for a die-hard build, where we can keep operating and functioning at those lower negative hit point totals in order to keep everything moving, be able to heal and enhance ourselves, but having as many barriers between you and death as possible is still a really good thing. That We are building an immovable fat fanatic after all. The next one I would recommend is Restful. It's 4,500 4, gold pieces. You only need two hours of rest while wearing this armor, and you do not become fatigued while sleeping in this armor. There is a limitation. It's a pretty serious one though. This is only usable for you once a day. I know. Absolutely terrible. Awful. Get this, because then you can just continuously wear this and sleep in it, because you only need two hours of sleep, and if it's only usable once, once per day, you just go to 25 hours, take that first watch, and then you go get some sleep, and boom, two hours of rest, you're good. So, wear this. And you don't have to take it off, ever, either. Well, I mean, at some point, your character will presumably take it off, but you get the idea. And the other enchantment I would recommend is Spell Dodging. It counts as a plus two enhancement bonus, and it gives you a plus four dodge bonus to your armor class against attack rolls from spells and spell-like abilities, touch spells, and summoned creatures. 
your touch armor class is going to be your big weak point against spellcasters, uh, ray spells, stuff like shocking grasp. All of these work off of your touch armor class, which takes out your full plate armor bonus. So that's uh, losing nine to your armor right off the top there. So get this. This is absolutely great for you to have. And then we come to your divine armor enchantments. You can provide a plus one enhancement bonus and you get another plus one for every three levels afterwards, max of a plus five at level 19. This can also be used to give you energy, energy resistance, normal, improved, and greater, fortification, heavy and light or moderate, glamoured, and spell resistance 13, 15, 17, and 19. I mean, I wouldn't recommend getting spell resistance as a permanent enchantment like I would uh, the fortification enchantments, but if you can freely apply them, then, you know, not much harm to be had there. So, again, this helps to free up a fair bit of your, bu of your armor budget. But then we go on to general equipment. And to begin with, a belt of giant strength is hard to pass up. It'll cost you anywhere between 4,000, 16,000, or 36,000 gold pieces, and will give you a plus two, or plus four, or plus six bonus to your strength score uh, in that order. And since we're going up, since we're a melee character and we're going off of a high strength build, this will be incredibly handy for you. But, say you decide you didn't want to go for a permanent heavy fortification enchantment on your armor to free up for a belt of physical might. It's probably a wise choice. It costs 10,000 gold pieces, 40,000 or 90,000 if you can get it. You want the version that gives you a bonus to your strength and constitution. As this will give you a plus 2, plus 4 or plus 6 bonus to both of those stats. And again, we're at melee build so more hit points is going to be incredibly good for you. But then after that, we also have the Cloak of Resistance, and this will cost you anywhere between 1,000 to 25,000 gold pieces. It gives you a plus one to a plus five resistance bonus to all saves, and of course you have those pluses all in between, you have plus two, plus three, plus four. And the higher you can spring for, definitely get it. After that, we have Ring of Protection. We already are going with a high armor class build using uh, heavy armor, but the more layers of protection we can get, the better. This will cost you anywhere between 2,000 to 50,000 gold pieces, assuming you have the option to buy it, and can give you anywhere from a plus one to a plus five deflection bonus to your AC. This will also count towards your touch armor class. So, between the, uh, between the, uh, previous armor enchantment and the ring of protection that's a plus nine total right there to your touch armor class definitely very much so worthwhile it will do a lot to keep you alive and then going on from there we have the headband of inspired wisdom and given that wisdom is one of our is our primary casting stat and affects so many of our abilities this will cost you anywhere between 4,000, 16,000, or 36,000 gold pieces, and gives a plus two, plus four, or plus six bonus to your wisdom. Another good item to have is a wand of cure light wounds, 750 gold pieces, 50 charges of healing at 1d8 plus one. You use this after any fight, even if you're not the primary healer, you can use this freely and help out the primary healer afterwards. And 750 gold pieces, as we've seen, in comparison to so much of the other equipment, is a pittance. Maybe you don't use this on at a point when you're going to a full night's rest, but immediately after a fight, if you want to keep chugging along, tearing your way through as many opponents as possible, or if it's just that brief respite, whatever the situation may be where you're not just going to get a full night's sleep, use this. And of course, another classic item that has appeared on so many lists, it's the Handy Haversack. Costs 2,000 gold pieces, two side pouches uh, that hold two cubic feet or 20 pounds of material. There's also one center pouch that holds eight cubic feet or 80 pounds of material. You can draw items without provoking an attack of opportunity, and for those of you overseas who may be running on the metric system, this equates to 0 0.06 cubic meters and 9 kilograms, or 0.226 cubic meters and 36 kilograms. Now, 
for the last and final item, we have the Amulet of Quaking Strikes. It's 28,000 gold pieces, usable two times a day, make a melee attack against the ground as a standard action. You choose a point within, three, uh, within 100 feet and apply your attack roll against all creatures in a 20 foot radius. The Amulet's wearer then rolls damage, applying all bonuses from strength, feats like power attack, and vital strike. This doesn't apply any enhancement bonuses your weapon has, or enchantments such as Holy or Flaming, but oh my god, does this really just amp up the value of feats like the Vital Strike, because Vital Strike, normally single attack against one target. With our, with uh, the Cleave feat tree that we built into, we can use Vital Strike as part of Cleave, but this, if you're facing down a good clump of enemies, and you're able to catch even three of them, even two of them might still be worthwhile, but three or more, definitely take that shot and go for all of them. The amount of damage this will let you pump out is amazing. And it's only 28,000 gold pieces, which is relatively affordable in comparison to so many of the other items on this list. And I like to try to find one interesting item for you all. But what do you think? Go on down into the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Are there any items I've missed that you would include on such a list? Or do you think any of these have completely missed the mark? Certainly, my suggestion for the fortification enchantments might be controversial amongst some, but let me know your thoughts down below. And if you haven't done so already, go on down there and hit that subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or, like I said earlier, if you're already part of the alumni here, then share the video, like it, and help us spread the word far and wide. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.